the plate, say the pledge and all that first? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I want to call the Building Standards Commission meeting together for Wednesday, May 10th, and we'll all rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance. Introductions of new staff members. Uh, Amy, and I'm saying this wrong, y'all tell me. Is Amy Cloutier? Cloutier? Cloutier, Cloutier. Cloutier, okay. But however you want to say it. Okay, that's good. She's an office assistant, third, and Robin Bruton. Okay, code enforcement technician. So we welcome y'all to our meetings. We do um, the board since we got some new folks as well. We can. We do have some new board members. We'll, we'll let everybody just introduce themselves and go from there. You want to start this in? Yes, I'm Michael Bailey. Travis Davis. John Wyndham. And I'm Sally Ann Swearingen. Nathaniel Walker. Rusty Sanders. Okay. And we got an off net. Steve Pearl. Oh, hi, Steve. All right. Um, we need to uh, review the minutes and have approval of minutes. Do I have anybody to approve those minutes? If y'all had a chance to read over them, I know they were sent to you. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So we'll get started now. Consider granting the merits of the Gulf Coast Alumni Association. 321 Old Tower Road. Afternoon, board. Steve Bartlett, the Director of Public Works and City Engineer. And um, glad to see all of you here. Some of you um, are, I'm glad you just made it. So, <laughs> no, a lot of friends here, so good to see you. Um, so, we have uh, in our applicants here, and he would like to come and speak to you, but just a little bit of background. Uh, the fraternity house at 321 Old Tyler Road uh, recently completed the construction of a new meeting facility. Uh, it is a um, fraternity and sororities uh, are only allowed uh, to occupy uh, spaces under a specific use permit, which was approved by Planning and Zoning Commission and also by City Council. And this approval is only for the specific uses at the physical address are shown in their plans as part of that SUP. Uh, those plans did show a new parking lot uh, consisting of a six-inch rock base and two inches of hot mix asphalt as part of their overall plan. They built a wonderful facility and did a good job, and we were ready to do the certificate of occupancy as we would. And so our building inspector, Don, was there to do that final walkthrough and had some comments on their, their parking lot. So kind of the short version is the parking lot um, was originally shown to be six inches of new rock and two inches of asphalt kind of over the area where their existing parking was and an expanded version of that to handle new parking spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, when he got there, what he observed was the old parking lot, which was still there, and they had added some wings onto it, which is still a, 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 a fine way to do that, but those wings were comprised of a very thin layer of just ground up asphalt millings. Then the whole thing had been shot a fog seal, kind of the black seal you see in some parking lots and then striped. So he was able to take his boot and kind of scrape those millings down to the dirt pr pretty easily. So we were concerned that it didn't meet what was shown in the SUP, but more particularly that uh, it didn't really follow our fire code issues. Now I will tell you our ordinances and even our design guidelines don't really dictate parking lots. They dictate city street designs. But under uh, the NFPA, which is the fire code basically, we've got to have kind of all weather um, parking lots or all weather pathways and fire lanes that will support fire apparatus as they say uh, or ambulances and of course we want to be able to get up to a building with an ambulance or fight a fire as Rusty well knows and so we had some concerns that this thinner pavement wasn't ample for that uh, and probably not even ample for garbage trucks and other things so we didn't want to have a fire truck bogged down and unable to respond and we didn't want to tear up their parking lot not that I ever get accused of my garbage trucks tearing up parking lots but uh, in this case. So we've had some very uh, good conversations. It was very uh, pleasant and we've all been working through this and I suggested that they come to you. 
uh, to talk to you about whether uh, they could have this waiver of that additional area. So we did not have really any primary concerns with the old asphalt because it had been used all this time. I don't know what the sections are, but we had not failed and had problems with our garbage trucks. So it was more so these extra parking wings that didn't meet the standards uh, of it. So uh, I've given you just for some metrics. Uh, do you still, I guess you have my staff report in there. Uh, just so you kind of had some comparative structural numbers. And this is just a way that engineers like to kind of hold things side by side and compare them. So the structural, the millings had a structural number of 0.15. What was originally called for in the plans, a six inch rock base and two inch, had a structural number of 1.4. And just think of that as a comparative matrix. And then if you said, well, what else could we do or what else would have that kind of structure, about three inches of a hot mix laid on top of that would, would generate back to that sort of kind of thing. Now, we're not even proposing that as much as I wanted to give you an understanding of where they, everything stood relative to each other as far as structural numbers. So, <clears throat> so currently those areas are, are inadequate from what was originally approved. Um, if you do move forward um, uh, and grant a waiver, staff would simply request that you very specifically qualify uh, that we're kind of held harmless from damages. Right now we have asked them, uh, we've removed their dumpster and we're at the green cart stage and they push them out to the road just so we didn't tear up their parking lot. We don't want to tear it up. And until we got through this, we have issued them a temporary CO. I just, you got the temp CO, I think? Yes. Okay. Got a temporary CO for 90 days, I believe, so they could occupy. They have a great building. And we wanted to work through this problem with you. So I'm happy to answer any questions. But again, we're here because it didn't quite meet the building standards we've set up. And um, the applicant, of course, is here. And he'd like to do a presentation to you on their thoughts. Okay, can I ask a question Yes, first? we'll do questions. Uh, what about ADA parking? I know that's a requirement. Okay. So he has, so they have ADA parking there. It was inadequate. There was some inadequate depth in okay. the back out in measurement. So we worked through that with them. That is not part of this waiver. Okay. So in other words, they will have to bring that up to standard if they hadn't already. And I didn't ask him this morning, but yeah. yeah. I, no, yeah. They, the ADA parking will have to be compliant. Now, we are not the uh, Texas Accessibility Texas. Standards reviewers, right. uh, but we, we know what the rules are, and so we try to work with owners to meet it because a reviewer will come out and they will have a prayer meeting about it. Mm -hmm. And so um, we, uh, we, we worked with them. They did have an inadequate back out depth. <laughs> They've agreed to fix that, okay. and that will also be part of our temporary CO. I didn't make that as part of the case today because it wasn't a request for a waiver for that part. Okay. All right. So All right. Any other questions? Okay, well, I'll let you call our applicant, and okay. I'll be here for questions. Thank you. All right. We'd like to hear from the applicant, please. I have some copies and some pictures from my presentation. I guess I can hand it to you directly, or are you going to hand them all out? No, they're in. They're, I got they're folders. 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 Oh, okay. Look at you. Well, I tried. He's all prepared. pretty much typed out what I'm going to say. My name is John Ward. I'm the president of the Gulf Coast Alumni Association. Um, I'd like to just go ahead and kind of read my presentation and then answer any questions and I'll give you some time, whatever it takes, to digest it. Um, we are requesting a variance and approval for parking lot addition in order to get a permanent CO for our newly constructed meeting room. Uh, I was informed that the concern for granting the CO was the fire trucks were too heavy for the materials used for the fire lane. Uh, the additions to the existing 40 by 80 asphalt lot and circular drive was done by removing the topsoil, further packing, and installing asphalt millings. The original plans did call for six inches of base and two inches of asphalt. I provided a copy of the plans with pictures attached showing the new parking provided. Uh, the pictures were taken as if you're standing on the colored dots and looking the direction of the arrow. Uh, I couldn't figure out a way to, <laughs> to, to make that uh, easier. The, um, the pink tab shows the beginning of the fire lane from the entrance from Old Tyler. This lane is uh, almost completely on the existing asphalt lot. The um, 
yellow dot shows where the fire lane turns and goes in front of the actual meeting room and connects to the circular drive with the existing asphalt driveway. This portion of the fire lane was the area used as a lane for city sanitation department's garbage trucks for well over the last 10 years. There have been no issues of being stuck or having difficulties picking up the dumpsters. Um, this was actually prior to the topping being added and prior to the additional packing. The area of this part of the fire lane that has been topped is approximately 50 feet in length. The orange spot shows the corner of the fire lane as it turns to the circular drive. Uh, the actual corner of this uh, circular drive is within 60 feet of the corner of the new building. So it actually wouldn't be necessary for the fire truck to leave the as original asphalt if it didn't desire to. Uh, in other words, they could pull up and still be within 60 feet of the building on the existing parking lot. The green spot and white shows the new parking spots. Uh, the original plan that was approved showed 27 spots with two of them being handicapped. The lot as it is now has 39 spots of which two are handicapped. Um, this variance request is in harmony with the intent and purpose of the plan. Uh, will not injure or change the use of the adjacent property, will not ad adversely affect the health, safety, or general welfare of the public, and it will not authorize the use uh, other than the use is specifically authorized. Um, this variance is not a self-created hardship. I'm respectfully requesting this variance be approved so that a permanent PO CO can be <coughs> issued. Any questions from the committee? Uh, on the <clears throat> orange tab there, it's hard for me to tell. Is there enough turning radius for one of the fire apparatus to get in there or a ladder truck? Steve, yes, sir, that was actually on the plans. I mean, we just executed the plans that we were given for the fire lane. Yes, sir, I believe Army's layout. Okay. Is this uh, extra area, has this been added to the original plans or was this in the original plans? This was in the original plans. They expanded it, uh, John. And okay. With, with some extra parking spaces. So, yes, basically this was the original plan area for the parking space. Okay. So, the, the original plan, as far as we know, does have the six inches of rock in the, the by the standards? Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Wyndham, originally what uh, uh, Army Curtis showed is that a new parking lot be placed of which underneath would have been the old parking area and some of their parking spots. So it was larger, and but it encompassed that area. And so that was kind of what the drawing showed. Uh, like I say, in this case, they chose to keep that old area and then just add supplemental to the side. So they've affected a parking lot in the same area. The geometry is slightly different, but not much, and they've added some spaces when they did it. So what you have now is the old parking lot and then some millings on each side <clears throat> and on some drive areas that were thinner. Uh, and the primary fire lane is through their, their old driveway and the old parking lot, which is, is kind of what he's showing you in that picture. So the old, it meets standards? Well, the old, you know, we, we don't force them, Ms. Swearingen, to core it, you know, and to tell us, but what we know is it's held up to garbage truck after garbage truck and to their personal use of it. And so normally we wouldn't make somebody tear out an old parking lot right. that didn't appear to be in bad shape. So in this case, I'm telling you, our assumption is that it's adequate. Okay. The special use permit was originally issued under the expectation that the full lot was going to be replaced with new base and new asphalt. Correct. So what's on the wings is only one inch thick. Well, we, I will tell you, we scraped, or my you know, building inspector scraped a few areas, and it was very, very thin. He was able to take his boot and kind of make it to dirt. Uh, so, yes, sir. Now, we didn't, we didn't core all the way through it, and so we weren't in a dispute other than I'm just telling you it's very thin. We have used an inch to define that in some areas. It might be more. In some areas, it certainly is less. But I think in average, uh, we think it's just a very thin layer. Yes, sir. Very thin layer. Okay. Any other questions from the committee? 
Do I have anybody else that would like to make a comment in favor? Anybody opposed or have any comments? Well, I, have, I have an additional question. Yeah. Okay. On the, on the green Great. image, um, on the green image, there's parking you can see that's kind of behind the tree shown in the plan view here that's not showed as being shaded pavement. Can you just, can somebody clarify? It's hard to tell from these images. What were the limits of the existing pavement and what <coughs> is the millings, the added millings that we're talking it's about? It's actually the area between the circular driveway and the old uh, 40 by 80 parking lot. And um, so there were several dead trees and things like that in that area. So we just cleaned that up. Uh, took the topsoil out, took the trees out, packed it, and added the millings to that. So that's actually that was the open that was a open area between the old parking lot and the circular drive that went that connected it all. Right. So that's the portion there. that's just the millings. Yes. That, okay. That's what I'm trying to clarify. Yeah. What was existing parking and what is millings? I, I believe that'll be on your map. It'll be between the green sticker and the yellow sticker. Okay. And that circular drive, which was also existing pavements. Okay. So instead of adding one uh, bay of parking, they actually added two and used the drive for another drive aisle. That's where they got some of those additional spots. Okay. So I think everything from the old parking lot to the circular drive, and you correct me, uh, John, if I'm wrong, is, is, is milling. That's correct. Okay. So do you know if they sealed the entire parking lot or just the new part? It, it appears that they did a fog seal over the entire parking lot. And then, and of course, that's real common, too, to, to have them do that prior to striping because it makes your stripes, you know, um, new. Have a new base to paint on. Steve, yes, are sir. there any uh, drainage, drainage lines underneath this, water lines, uh, storm drains underneath any of this parking lot? Not, not that we know of, not shown in Army's plans. Okay. Uh, service lines, once they leave our meter, are usually a little fuzzy. So I can't swear to you exactly where those service lines go, but but none that we know. Of. That's a good question. The, the new water lines and the new septic lines and everything are between the parking, the new parking and the fence. They're about oh, I don't know ten or fifteen. My feet. my concern was the storm drains, quite large storm drains, and ladder truck has to put down the. Outrigger sometimes it's been known to punch through stuff if it's not enough between. Yes, sir. To our knowledge, there wasn't any issues with that. Okay. Any other questions? Any discussion now? Or what? Nope. Any discussion? I have some discussion comments. Okay. Uh, from years of fire service, I've seen fire trucks sink. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not moving forward, backward, sideways, but they're vibrating. Some water comes out, and if the base is not good enough, it will sink down. Secondly, at fire station three on the south loop, when we built the building, we put uh, asphalt paving down that was not very thick. And every day you pull the fire truck out, you let it run and you check it out and everything, clean it. And over a period of time, big depressions form. They end up having to come back in there, dig it out, put in, I think, six inches concrete with three eight rebar on one foot centers and all that to make it stout enough that it wouldn't have this problem. And around town, you can tell where the garbage trucks don't have good fitting uh, footing whenever they use the front overhead loader because you'll see depressions in the ground. It just tears it up. The fire apparatus, I don't know how much garbage truck weight on the front end is, but fire trucks are about 78,000 pounds. Now, the one I saw stuck wasn't near that of a size. But it's going to have to have a solid spot. And there's not just one fire truck pulling in there. There may be two or three ambulances too so I'm very concerned about this not being brought up to the original plans that was put in put forth 
but if they think the three inches of asphalt would be sufficient for this, I can see that. But a big piece of equipment sitting there vibrating will tend to move downward. And I don't know if this is the same type of soil that's up on top of the hill by the water plant, but that's sand up there, and I don't know how that would hold up. I don't know anything about the coring and all that, so. Can you just, I'm, I'm not an asphalt person, can you do like the fire lanes and stuff and get that part to where it needed to be without doing the entire parking lot? Is that a possibility? Uh, certainly fire, fire lanes can be made thicker than parking areas. And I, I guess effectively some of that exists today because they're used, they're existing pavements, right. which I would suspect are certainly thicker than the millings. So, uh, yes, you could even improve those fire lanes uh, specifically and not improve the residence parking as well. So that, that's an option as well. Okay. Is, is there some reason why you couldn't do it with six-inch rock and two inches of asphalt in the first place? Well, what was the reason for putting an inch of asphalt down? Well, we actually did put a, a, an inch of asphalt down when we um, requested the contractor to come out and give us a quote. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we discussed that, to be honest with you, I had not looked at the requirements prior to the contractor coming out and giving us a quote. And uh, when we looked at it and when I talked to the contractor, you know, the it seemed as though the requirements were, you know, extravagant for what we were trying to do and um, so I asked him what options we had and he actually said that the millings are supposed to be two inches deep or two inches thick mm -hmm. and the millings weren't placed over the existing asphalt base the asphalt I, I don't know if army ever intended for us to replace the existing asphalt or not you know the way I read the plans it didn't appear there was two arrows and stuff like that on it and I didn't go back and talk to him about it but uh, so when we talked to the contractor the contractor said that was an option of what we chose to do and I actually made that decision now in in hindsight I wish I had come and asked for a variance prior to doing that uh, when we finished the building I thought we were going to be able to get a, a temporary CO and you know go from there we had several events scheduled in uh, May or end of April and so we were kind of in a rush and so we went ahead and did the parking lot that way. Uh, in hindsight, I wish I'd come here prior to it and gotten approval, but I didn't. So we were functioning under the assumption that the fire lane you know, was all pretty much on the existing parking. And it, you know, the, the garbage trucks have been going in and out for at least 10 years without any issues. Um, the portion where the dumpster was moved to was actually the very issue right in the, the fire lane right in front of the building and it had never had any kind of surface on it at all or prior to us putting the package on it and hadn't had an issue with it. So anyway, I made that decision, you know, uh, based on my experience and uh, that's where that came from. Okay. Any other discussion? How wide is that fire lane? Rusty, I, I haven't measured it. It appears to be about 24 feet long. So, fire trucks will be side by side on that, but we still don't know how solid that is. I have a couple of comments. I think just personal uh, thought here. Uh, mm -hmm. Just one to quickly address one of the points uh, Mr. Ward that says, fire truck could feasibly get within 60 feet of the building, which is enough. And while that may be functionally true, in the heat of the moment, no fire truck's going to stop where, the, right. where the, the parking exists if the fire stripe shows they can go further. So I, I think anywhere, to me, anywhere that's striped as fire lane or is a known uh, uh, garbage truck access aisle is, has to be able to support that uh, load. Anything outside of that, you know, maybe we could have discussion. But I, I think at that point you're splitting hairs, and how do you, 
how does the inspector then at that point go out there and confirm that, hey, the drive aisles are a, a particular thickness and oh, this over here on the side is not. I mean, we're asking the inspectors to, you know, really split hairs if that's what's called upon. I think allowing the existing pavement, you know, if it has a history of being sufficient, then, uh, you know, to me, that's sufficient. If it's held up for years and years of garbage truck, then it's obviously doing its job properly and doesn't have to be ripped up and replaced. But uh, I, I think the wings or the addition um, needs to be capable of supporting the same load that the previous pavement needed to be supported. Even though, you know, even if we don't have to rip out the whole thing and bring it all up as the original plans may have called for, um, I'm concerned about the additional parking where there's going to be known fire truck or garbage access. Okay. Any other discussion? Do I have a motion? Steve's recommendation is that we would record the city if we allow this to happen no longer pick up garbage from a dumpster concerned about how much garbage they do have how many people live in the house okay. I'm trying to figure out how to format this slide. <laughs> You can. You're about welcome to say anything else. About the, the you know, whenever the issue became we, uh, when it became an issue, obviously they were running garbage trucks and everything, and so we just said we'll use the carts. And my intention was to get with I think it's Kerry, uh, and work out a plan if we needed to relocate the dumpster or whatever, you know, we needed to do to satisfy his requirements of where he was comfortable. Um, we were obviously, you know, we'd like to do that. The carts, uh, the carts are working, but I mean, it's a lot of work for them. And the very idea they have to be up Tuesday by seven is uh, pretty traumatic to them. But uh, <laughs> anyway, the plan was to get with uh, Terry and work out where to put the. We have almost 15 acres there. I feel like we can find a place that's adequate for being able to pick up a dumpster if if what we have been using is not a little closer to the road or something. Yeah, if we needed to. Right. Yeah. Swergeon, we, we would have no objection if the garbage truck could basically remain on those existing pavements. We would have no objection to doing a dumpster there. Okay. I would make a motion that we deny the request and require the three inch of asphalt over the one inch millings. So required over what now though? Uh, what the last sentence here require three inch three asphalt. asphalt. Okay. Deny request to require the three inch asphalt over the one inch millings over the entire parking <coughs> lot or just the fire lanes? I think they're just mm -hmm. talking about the wings. If that's correct. If we were to right. add the wings, right. okay. Yeah, that would solve the whole problem, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. I second that. Okay, we have a, a motion and a second. Can I ask a question on the motion? Okay. Um, if we specify they use the three inch from there, it may be more economical for them to dig it up and put the six inches of base over two inches. Can we just specify that it be sufficient? You know, maybe not three inches. Asked. I don't know what the prices are, but if we require they do three inch, they may could have made it sufficient with six inches of base and two inches of asphalt for cheaper. I just don't want to hamstring them into a corner by requiring it be the three inches of so asphalt. So which one would be more economical for them? Right. We just want it to be sufficient uh, for the, the yeah, intended use. The number 1.35 or 1.4, whichever is. 
Board, board, if you want to make it just subject to approval by the city engineer, then we can review whatever pavement section they come up with. That sounds that's good. Reasonable. Well, that sounds good. Right. And, and do we have a way to make sure it's going to be built this way? So we'll um, make an effort at this point specifically to watch it when it goes in, John, I think is okay. the best answer I've got well, for sure you. Our building, yeah. yeah. Okay. And normally we're not always there during a complete yeah. parking lot placement, yeah. but in this case um, we would work with them if they do any remediation to call us out for inspections. Okay. We have a, um, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, we have a public hearing uh, for 824 Ernest Street, Lot 9, <coughs> Buttress 4th. Good afternoon. Angela Sowell, City of Nacogdoches Code Enforcement Supervisor. Uh, I'm here today to bring these houses uh, to you all, especially the first two, which are located in the historical uh, district of Nacogdoches. Uh, okay. uh, like I said, the first two are located in the historical district. Um, 824 Ernest. Uh, we've got pictures there. My staff reports indicate uh, that we have that I was I posted that structure in June of 2022 for having a hole in the roof uh, notices were sent and signed for uh, August of 2022 a second notice was sent returned unclaimed uh, I've sent uh, recently done reinspections over the time uh, to see if you know anybody was going to make any progress with doing anything with the structure uh, haven't heard anything back, but I think Miss uh, Benilla, I believe that's her name, she's here today probably to speak on that behalf. Uh, the taxes are current at this time, uh, so someone is, you know, showing some interest in the property, uh, just not to where it should be suitable to be, you know, uh, nuisance to the neighborhood okay. with a hole in the roof. Um, the yard was unkept. Uh, they had a the porch overhang was falling off. Uh, uh, according to the pictures, they've done a little bit. They cleaned some of the uh, oops, some of the uh, greenery. The uh, landscaping. Yeah, some of the landscaping from around it, uh, but at this point, it is still a nuisance and in dilapidated structure. I think the um, historical committee is we, would like for you all to say whether it's dilapidated or get your take on it before it goes to the historical committee. So, uh, is your recommendation that I mean, it's is it passed? being salvaged I know in the historical aspects I mean we usually don't tear down structures unless we right. absolutely have to but they've got a uh, new way of doing it in the historical district now okay uh, they have uh, dilapidation by neglect okay. uh, so that's where we are uh, like I say Miss Vanilla I believe is here and she may want to speak on their behalf but the city's recommendation is that it it's dilapidated. Yeah, uh, I mean, inside it's pretty. Yeah, it's been open yeah. to the elements. It's rained in it, you know, right. and everything. Floor's the floor is rotten. The porch is, like I said, it's falling off. Rotten. The I don't know if y'all uh, been there or not, but so. yeah. I would imagine okay. a hole in the roof would. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. All right. All right. Would anybody like to speak on in paper? We're planning on uh, working on it. I know it's been a while, but you know, since the recession, I lost my job, you know, but we just do construction right now. Um, but I, we do want to make it like a storage building right now. The floors are good in it, you know, in some places, and we're going to replace it. We're going to close it off and make it like a storage building. Oh, a storage to put building. Our storage, to put our, like our materials that we have left over, 
you know, that's what we're trying to, what we want to do with it. Because the structure is like, like the building, the frame is uh, like sturdy because these houses are really sturdy. And um, there is a lot of rotten areas in there. In there. Yeah, but we do construction and we can be able to start working on it. You know, that's how we cleaned it up. We did the, we, we took the porch that, uh, porch that was falling off mm -hmm. and we did, we took off all that shrubbery and stuff around there for now. And, and you got a new We, we had, uh, not right now at the moment, but we're going to do it. We're wondering if you can give us like a eight months time to do, be able to do all this uh, uh, reconstruction on it. Okay, I guess I have a question. Um, here, I always ask thousands of questions, I know. Uh, the zoning, I mean, when you're saying you want st structure for storage, mm -hmm. and this is a residence area, neighborhood, what's the zoning on, on that? Uh, the zoning requirements, um, if it's a, a structure, uh, storage unit cannot be on a property that does not have a living uh, quarters on it. It has to be a house on the structure, on the property that, to have a storage building on it. Right, so I mean, we, it'd have to be zoned something differently if, she, if that was gonna be deemed just storage for the whole house. Require that, that or allow that. It doesn't allow that, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, with my other house being part of the property, because this all is one big property, my 816 and 824, and it goes all the way to the the area where the Lana Creek trails are at. It is all part of one. Like that's why I got I acquired this house when I bought the other 816. Does this look are they on the like same? Right. Yeah. Property. Okay. Okay. So that's probably what you'd need to do is go through and get it zoned together as one property. Yeah, but but in, in one. the interim, you would need to update it and maintain yeah. it to be and able to. And that's what we want to start doing is like start off on doing that, you know, since. But I didn't know I was getting these notices. I just recently got this last one that I got. So. Okay. I think my husband signed for the other ones. That's why I wasn't getting them. So. Oh, okay. And you know how some men, they just put them everywhere. I said, do you have a place? Do you have a place <laughs> to put them? I said some men <laughs> and my husband. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Do we have questions from the committee? So if you go to the, <clears throat> you could go and combine these two into one property. Is that what you're saying here? Well, it would have to get it approved yeah, from the zoning be, committee, yeah, right. it and it may not. Right. It may at not that point be approved. In time, yeah. She could technically turn it into a storage. If that's up building. to the zoning committee, but if they don't approve it, then it would have to be a residence, some to sort of residence. Yeah. You could not have it as a storage. storage. It would have yeah. to be a house that would be rentable or to go out. Well, I would still have to work on it too, then to make it yes. like, lit like that. But right. as for now, the structure itself is sturdy, like the frame and everything. The roof isn't, you know, because it's got that hole and everything, but you know. So I guess my, our recommendation would, could we give her an extension yes. to be able to get it up to livable yes. appropriation and then then go to go the zoning? To the yeah, I think, the, I think the property use isn't necessarily the our, discussion our for today, but Correct. whether or not the building could be dry that in. And, salvageable. And, yeah, salvaged to a point that, mm -hmm. you know, you can handle the rest of it later. If if the two properties are made into one, it takes what replatting and not going through zoning, doesn't it? John, it, it, it would have to go. It handles that, but yes, it would have to be uh, replatted for one big one lot. lot. But our, our, we're looking at only the structure yeah, itself. Yes. I, I think the issue is a storage facility can only be an accessory Correct. building right. to a residence, and it can't be a standalone. So if it was Correct. one single property with a residence, you could have a storage building mm -hmm. as an accessory, so the two lots is right. what pollutes that. Right. Okay. Are you going to make an effort to repair the roof to and preserve the rest of it any yes. time in the near future? Yes, I was wanting to do that. So you're saying it would take you approximately eight months? Is that um, your recommendation? A little bit more, but um, I would start working on it and wanting to do like the roof first. This is what you got to start with is the roof. Yeah. And then you work your way in, you know, and then. Okay. Anybody else on the discussion? Was the porch 
the modifications to the porch was that made after the, the last notice? Uh, when I got that notice, I did see that one, and um, I, it was coming down already. So it eventually one of the storms came, and it knocked it down. And then there was a wire, and I called this, the light people to come and disconnect the wire to it. And then me and my husband, he just membered it and got rid of it, the porch area, because that one was uh, really bad. It didn't have no floor or nothing. Is there electric service? No, not serving nothing, this house. no electric to, no, nothing okay. to it. Yeah. Okay. So if we say six days, 90 days, she has to have a plan of action approved by the uh, city. Does that work? So I'm willing to. Have a plan of action within 60 days. Yes, so you're making a motion that we have a plan of but action. I'm throwing that out. Yeah. Would that be even reasonable? 60 or 90 or? Well, plan of action with some action. Yeah. I mean, I think we need to have well, some action. I mean, I'd like to action. see something, you know, that we're you know, moving forward towards that effort. Right. And not just delaying it out into the future sometimes. Yeah, because the more you delay it, the more it's going to get it's worse. It's going to get worse, yeah. yes. Right. Okay. Is there anybody else that wants to speak? I don't want to. How, how did you go about establishing your timeline for eight month extension? Uh, just materials and you know how we do just construction. We get uh, jobs by when we do the construction, and you know slows work's been slow, so that's what I'm saying. That's how I because it hasn't been picking up lately, you know. Okay. Do I hear a motion from anybody? Or do you want me to make a motion? If this is in the historical district, then it has mm -hmm. to be restored pretty much back to correct. the same way that it looks. Is that correct? The exterior does, mm -hmm. definitely. What about porches and stuff like that? The porches will have to be added back just like they are. Do you understand what they're saying? Yes. Okay. okay. Unless you find an earlier photo that where there was no porch, you would have to go back and... I just, we just removed it because it was a, that was a month. Another right. hazard, you know, and it but was open. Building the porch back is yes. something that you would do. Okay. And being the little awning that goes in front of it, yes. So, do you want me to make a plan, recommendation? Plan of action or something? Mm -hmm. yeah. I make a motion. Can I make a motion yes. since I'm steer? Okay. I make a motion that uh, we give you 60 days to create a plan of action, and within that 60 days, we start seeing some evidence of work, and then within nine eight months, since you said eight months, eight months, um, we see some movement for toward that. But your plan of action needs to be brought to the city. Do I hear a second? A second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. I'm glad to see that you're doing something with it. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have 319 Richardson Street, 728 Boise de Arc, Lot 12E, Block 5. Uh, it has two addresses because it's one big lot, but if you, uh, if you look at it from uh, Richardson Street, it's 319 Richardson. If you're on Bo Bozdor Bozdor, it's 728 Bozdor, but it is the same property, same piece of property. Uh, that structure has been neglected, abandoned. I posted it. it. It was posted by a previous code enforcement officer. Uh, we never got a chance to move forward with it because of it being in the historical district. Uh, I've sent notices to the owner. There's been no communication at all. Uh, the taxes are delinquent. Uh, the structure has d just deteriorated over the neighborhood, over the time over over time and it is a nuisance to the neighborhood uh, i don't see anyone here uh, but it is in the historical it, overlay it, too, it's right? in the historical overlay <laughs> also uh so city staff uh needs a recommendation that it's beyond repair okay, this one is know. beyond repair uh it's it's covered with uh, landscaping and just weeds. You barely can see the house. Uh, it's leaning. 
no structural support, hardly at all. It's very dangerous, uh, and and it's open. So. Okay. Yes, there's no. It's been no communication with the owners at all. Uh, we've sent notices and they return, but nobody's out of town or no. Actually, local. here in town. Uh, so. That used to be such a vibrant area. People mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all over. Yeah. Hmm. I'm surprised. Okay. So does it, if it, if we say it needs to be torn down, does that need to go to the historical it, board? We, we will take it, I will take that back to the historical, historical. committee and they will move forward with, with demolition by neglect. Okay. All right. Because it is in bad, bad shape. It is. Yeah. Okay. Any discussion? Is there a motion? It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to make the motion that we tear it down. I second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 1110 Shawnee Street, Lot 3, Block 1, Cleaver. Uh, 1110 Shawnee Street. Uh, I'm sure most of you all have saw this one before. Uh, it was bought to this Building Standards Board in uh, November of 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, the structure caught fire in January of 2018. Uh, notices were sent to the owners um, in June. They were signed, uh, signed by the owner. In November of 2018, I received a phone call from the owner uh, that he wanted to see about getting a uh, permit. I informed him that I was on vacation and to give me a call back, you know, on Monday, but I never heard from him. Uh, back early last year, latter part of last year, uh, I drove by and I noticed the owner was trying to re repair the structure. I notified the inspections to find out if they knew anything about a permit, and they did not. Um, I, they came over and talked to the owner and told him that the structure was had been posted. It was ordered demolished back in November of 2018 at that board meeting. Um, had a, I have a, a message from the fire um, fire marshal's office that the structure was beyond repair. Uh, of course, they weren't. He's not a engineer or anything, but his knowledge with uh, fires, he thought that the structure was beyond repair. Um, I believe the owner is here to speak on his behalf, but on the city's city's recommendation is the structure be demolished. All right. Do I have someone who would like to speak on the behalf of the? Yeah, state your name and. Yes, uh, my name is Sherman Cossey, uh, and I'm the owner of the property at 1110 Shawnee. Um, I'm a, I've, I've been a general contractor with the city of Nacogdoches for about the past 30 years. And um, when David Neese was here, um, it was determined uh, that if a structure was over 50% damaged, uh, that, was the, that was the standard that, that they were using at that time. Um, only uh, 25 percent um, uh, of where the fire was initially at that's that's it, it represents 25 percent of the roof in my thoughts um, the other part of the stretch structure uh, three quarters of the structure is sound um, like Angie said that um, 
I did come in to pull a permit. And when I came in to pull a permit, uh, I was given a permit. Um, the next day, um, the city called, a young lady from the city called uh, and said that the permit was revoked the very next day. And I, I, I asked her uh, at that time, um, was the city not going to honor the, the permit that I had pulled? And she let me talk to um, a person that I, I know, I know Angie and I know Don before he started working with the city. Mm -hmm. But she let me talk to someone that I had never talked to before. His name was Armando, uh, Armando or something like that. That was the city planner? Who was that? Oh, that's you? Am I saying that? Okay. Okay. Is, is that you? Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> so I asked Armando the same question that I asked the young lady that called. I said, is the city going to honor my permit? And he said, he said, well, the gist of that conversation went like this. He says, well, um, Angie is over there. Mm -hmm. And he said, she's on vacation this week. And uh, I requested, at that time, I requested a call back uh, from Angie. Now, in no way um, am I saying that Angie has not been fair. I mean, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not going to even go there. She's been more than fair. But um, I feel that I never got that call, the call back that I requested uh, from Angie, Angela. And so... Um, I gave her time to get get back from on vacation, and when I didn't get a call back from her two weeks, three weeks down the line, um, I assumed that it was okay to proceed. And um, you didn't try to call though. No, okay. no, I was I was expecting a call back, and so I I didn't I didn't call her back. Um, but anyway, I proceed I I, I uh, proceeded with the work. And um, Angie came out and uh, she called Don and he came out and once we established, um, well at that time, um, Angie said, Sherman, we're not going to say that you can't repair the house. And, um, and, and so Don was concerned uh, that, the, uh, um, that the blueprints I'm, I'm sorry, not the blueprints, the footprints. Uh, once we established that the footprints of the house would not change, um, he said at that time, um, well, Sherman, you need to do a drawing, uh, which I did. Uh, and I don't remember the, the, the date that you guys pulled my permit. Um, but anyway, the following, the following Monday, um, uh, I went down to the city uh, to inspections department, and I was on the way up to the inspections department, and I met Dunn, shoemate, uh, on the stairs. And I said, Dunn, I said, you know, here's the drawing that we need to, to proceed. And he says, well, he looked at, he looked at it momentarily, and he said, well, this, this needs to start with Angie. And so... Um, at that time, um, uh, I took I took the the drawing up to the inspection department, and Angie was Angela was, was not there, and I I told whoever um, uh, I told the secretary, for lack of better words, uh, that those those were that drawing was for Angie, and. Uh, <coughs> I haven't uh, heard anything back since that time. So um, that that house, um, over the years, I've <coughs> brought uh, several houses that were posted as unsafe structures uh, up to up to city code, and um, I feel like I can do the same thing for that house. Now, I apologize. I usually go and look at all the structures, but I didn't have a chance. And I really can't see the back half of this structure. 
Uh, do we have any photos of the back half? I'm sorry that I didn't take the time to go to see what kind of shape it, it's in. Is that the back? The, right the, okay. the back okay. half is, is the, back ha the back half of the structure and three quarters of the structure is sound. All it has is smoke damage. Try to explain to uh, Mr. Costa that um, we have posted houses before, and the owners were able to pull a permit and bring them back up to city code. And he has been one of our contractors that have done that. Mm -hmm. But when uh, the fire marshal is the one that made the, uh, the call. call on this particular structure. Mm -hmm. And it looks to me like there was a 2019 meeting of this commission where it was right. ordered to be demoed. Correct. Yeah. That's been almost four years ago. Well, uh, during that time, you know, COVID came in. We didn't do anything. We didn't take any. You know, right. We weren't doing anything. So everything just kind of put on hold. Mm -hmm. And then back last year, we started back with posting and, and moving forward with our demolition. So I thought it'd be fair that... Mr. Costi, revisit this with you all. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and Angela, I'm, I apologize uh, for interrupting. Mm -hmm. I don't ever remember getting a letter uh, about the demolition of that structure. I, I don't remember. Yeah. It, it may have been sent out, but I, I don't remember getting one. Okay. And you said uh, the building inspector looked at it? Okay. Yeah. Can do you mind telling me what your recommendation was after you looked at the structure? I know the the beams and the uh, Don Schumacher, uh, yeah, coach, city state your name and stuff. here at Nacogdoches. Uh, <clears throat> my heartfelt it is that it is not safe uh, to be in there. It's it is burned pretty bad. I, I'm with I'm gonna stand with Mike Brown, the the fire marshal, on this one that. Uh, it's an unsafe structure. I, I just don't see where it can be rehabbed safely. If it was rehabbed, it'd have to totally come up to electrical. Electrical plumbing, and plumbing yes, sir. And everything, yes, sir. That'd be expensive. Well, so it'd be easier, you're saying, to tear down, start over? Yes, ma'am, in my opinion. Can I say something? Sure. Um, I respectfully um, disagree with Mr. Shumate's uh, opinion. Uh, respectfully. Uh, I've brought several of these houses back uh, over the years. Right. I guess my concern is the ceiling joists and the floor joists and the, uh, it, because it looks like at the front half you almost have to tear it down anyway to put all that together. So, I mean, it's like the front half do, you're going to you be rebuilding. A, do you have a recent picture? That yeah, I guess these are recent. I don't know. First, May the 1st. May 1st, <laughs> so it's pretty recent. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, so do you see the part uh, on the left side of the house where we where the, the, uh, the house wrap is on? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. We've got that area supported already. Okay, and uh, we were trying to support the roof on the other side when we were uh, when we were shut down on the work. Um, Seventy-five percent, again, of the floors are sound. It may be it may need to be jacked in an area too. Uh, jacked up in an area too, and um, what you see on that picture. Uh, is not consistent with the rest of the rest of the house. What do you mean not consistent? In, in other words, the worst part of the house is what you see. From from. For the uh, first two pictures. Okay. Yeah. That, uh, the house where the fire started was on the left side, which is which is the the part of the house you see, and over to the right side. Um, 
uh, it's mostly uh, smoke damage. If the homeowner were attempt a rehabilitation, is the city liable for anything if a permit, building permit were issued? Well, where my understanding is that before the way it's happened is we do so much and um, if, if, if we were going to rewire. Right, you have uh, to do inspections along yes, the way. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and and uh, I'm not a master electrician. I'm not a, a master plumber. But I have, over the years, I've used somebody for that, for that aspect of the work. You did more framing and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Board, I, I know one of the concerns, fire marshal, inspector, and city engineer all discussed this. And, I mean, we are totally proactive in fixing these houses up and not demolishing them. I think we all have that attitude. Our concern here was that the structure, in order to work in the structure, uh -huh. to make the structure rehabbed and to make it safe, that that may be an unsafe condition. And so, in other words, roof joists and things that are now hard to determine how structurally sound they are in a burnt condition. I think the three of us collectively uh, felt like a permit wasn't warranted at that point and that's why he got the response he got is because we felt that it was an unsafe building to be in to try to rehab. Okay. Since uh, the fire marshal deemed it unsafe would he have to go and if we said that he could go ahead what if we, and he did, would the fire marshal have to go back out and say it would be okay? <clears throat> the, no, the, the, the fire marshal is a law enforcement official, uh -huh. and I think his word is basically primary in this. In other words, you and I don't get to override it, if that makes sense. Okay, so what we decide would be needed anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, like I said, 2019. Yeah. This commission did order it to be demolished, and mm -hmm. that's been almost four years ago. Yeah. So. And it sounds like even if a request was made to the city for a building permit, it probably wouldn't be granted. No. Yeah. So. So. Okay. That answers that question. All right. So do I have a. Um, I'd make a motion that we honor the city request and uh, demolish the structure. Second. I second. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, we have 2123 Railroad Street, lots 8 and 8B, block 57. Mm -hmm. 2123 Railroad Street, mm -hmm. uh, the, proper was, uh, the property was originally posted 2007 <coughs> for an accessory building that was on, on the property. Uh, it was eventually torn down. Um, back September of last year, uh, city staff noticed that the bricks had shifted on this property and there was a hole uh, in the roof which had partially collapsed. Uh, so notices were sent to the owner. Uh, the owner contacted staff, uh, has contacted staff and stated that she's trying to get some materials uh, she has in mind of repairing the structure. Uh, in February, a second notice was sent, and she, the owner called and said, asked for an additional time uh, to get everything together. She said that she had planned to make repairs by May the 11th of 2023, which is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the structure at, at this point is in the same Condition. state as it was, but the uh, owner is going to join us by phone, I believe, okay. but city staff recommends uh, that we allow her another 60 days. I think the contractor came in yesterday to pull a demolition permit, so city staff is asking to allow her, her some time to you know, an, an additional 60 days or so to get to it. To demo it. To get it, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. Is anybody living in the house? No one okay. lives there. Okay. The uh, owners live in uh, Dallas, in the Dallas area. So okay. she is. Do we need to make that phone 
phone call? Or? This is just the weekend header. Miss yeah. Breckenridge? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Yes, my name is uh, Martha Breckenridge. Um, I am actually the realtor, and my son is the, a marshal in Duncanville. His name is Fred Duncan. He is actually the owner of the property, and um, it was our grandfather's property. And so um, with us being far away, we had, we had tried to get uh, several people in that city to do work, but it seems like people don't do it's hard to find somebody to come to that side of the city to do some work and I don't know how that is but it just is so uh, we weren't able to get somebody to come out there and um, fix the roof and fix the whatever uh, the bricks back up to it however it's a it's got a fence around it so we didn't see it as being harmful to anybody so I mean, if nobody's in it and there's no lights and there's no water, no, what what harm is that doing to the community? It, it's a nuisance uh, to the neighborhood. Okay, how, I'm just asking, how is it a nuisance? It's not. It can't. It's not harming anybody. I just, I was just wondering. You said there was a oh. fence around it, which I don't see a fence around it. Maybe I'm not. There's a hurricane fence. There's a fence yes, right in front there of it. Right. Okay. So if we just put that fence back up there, and nobody's private oh. property, so why would somebody be on it? Well, I know that a lot of times in the neighborhood, if I'm if I'm wanting to remodel and make my house look a little nicer, I would like my neighbors to look like they care about their home and they would want to uh, make it look like it was lived in and the lawn was mowed and cared for and the landscaping and the exterior was taken care of. So Yeah, the lawn has been mowed and, and all of those things, but that have you been to that neighborhood? Yes. That neighborhood has progressively changed from the neighborhood that you might remember it to be into looks like a rental neighborhood is what it changed into. But I mean, I, I mean we, we plan to go ahead and, and uh, take it down and put something back up or some kind of way to, because it's all that we actually do have left of my grandfather and my grandmother is that house. Yes. And so, I understand you the know, sentimental you know, value. Yeah. 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 You so you're asking it. mainly for a 60-day extension to be able to handle this. Is this correct? Yeah. Yeah. 60. We've already um, asked uh, Mr. Tompkins or Thompson, someone there uh, has pulled a permit for us in case we can't not uh, get somebody to do something. Maybe we can just uh, go ahead and take it down, but there's a lot of... Uh, antique like items in there that I wanted to have a chance I'm coming this week to to go in the house okay. to try to, to salvage anything that I can out of it because the furniture is old it's from the 40s you know everything's in there from 30s and 40s sure I understand so, I understand we all yeah. have parents so, and grandparents so yeah um, it's very challenging right. and heartfelt to try to think that that sure. you know Okay, any any other discussion from the committee? Uh, I make a motion that we extend for 60 days and after that 60 days to allow you to be able to have time to get all of your belongings that you want out and then um, the city will take action after that. Second. Okay, I had, I had asked the city, um, well, it's already on here, it doesn't matter at this point, However, um, I think that I, I might just, my son will deed this over to me because I don't think he has a lot of uh, interest anymore in, in, in being in Nacogdoches, but when you're old and, you know, you never know if you want to be somewhere. So I appreciate you giving me the extension. Sure, sure. We understand 60 days will be fine. So uh, okay. do I have a... Vote second. We have a motion in the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
All right. Thank you and good luck. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. The next one is 715 Second Street, Lot 5, Block 2, Brewer. <coughs> 715. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm Shannon Silas. Okay. Oh. Hey, hang on just a second, Shannon. Yes, ma'am. 715 Second Street. Mm -hmm. um, property is overgrown. Uh, there's yeah. a few structural uh, problems with it. Um, the pictures aren't very good, but uh, it's kind of leaning as if, you know, it fall at any time. There's a few windows that are broken out. Uh, it is a nuisance to the neighborhood. Uh, it was posted again by one of the previous code enforcement officers for being un unsecured and an attractive nuisance. Um, in 2009, it was on the struck off list. No one bid it on it. In July of 2022, I posted the structure, a notice was sent to the owner. In August, I received a phone call from Mr. Silas that he would come in and pull a permit for repairs or demolition. Uh, March 23rd, notice was sent and, return, and returned signed by Mr. Silas. And as of today, the structure is still in the same shape. The taxes were paid up until the year 2014. Right now, it's about $4,100 delinquent in taxes, uh, and city staff recommends demolition if no permit is pulled within 30 days of okay. today. So, and Mr. Silas is. Can we have Mr. Silas on the phone? Yes, ma'am. All right. We'd like to hear from you. Uh, yes. I, so I bought the property from my uncle a few years ago, and he pulled the permit. So do I need to pull another permit myself? Uh, yes, you would need to pull another permit. Okay. So I, I'm a real estate agent myself here in San Antonio, and I, I fix houses and repair them. Um, can I get six months to repair it? Are you wanting to repair the structure? Or are you wanting to oh, tear it down and start? Not, start uh, oh. Repair it. it. It just needs the, the structure needs, it needs a little bit of leveling. It's got a hole in the roof, and the rest of it's cosmetic stuff. Phew. I don't know. I was scared to even walk around the structure. <laughs> it's really grown uh, up. Yeah, that, it's really overgrown more than anything. But, I mean, I, I can do it. I mean, I don't see why tearing, tearing it down, a structure that, I mean, I was going to turn it into some kind of rental property. So have we city evaluated and, and made it unsafe, unsound? Is that what you're telling me? Yes, I posted it uh, okay. last year. Yes. Okay, that's the August 22nd. Yes, ma'am. And then you went inside it? And oh, no, it back no, out. no. I didn't go inside it, and I know Angie, I mean, I could, you couldn't really get in. It's grown up so bad. Have you? When's the last time you were here? A month ago. Okay. I walked right around the back and went inside. Well, you're braver than me. Me too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm also experienced doing it, too. I mean... But I'd like an extension if I could get one, please. Okay. An extension to? To rehab it. Okay. To pull the proper permits and rehab it. I mean, I'm experienced. I've, I've fixed up worse than that. Okay. Uh, um, how about if we uh, give you 60 days to get a plan to see if it's feasible <coughs> to rehab with the city of Nacogdoches and, yeah. and clean it up within the 60 days. And if the city in building inspector and uh, agrees that it is salvageable, mm -hmm. then you'll need to have a plan of action and see some results within uh, six months. Okay, so my first step is to do what? To clean, clean the outside of it? Clean the outside the and get and a get plan of action with the building plan inspector and right. see well, what, what, if it's salvageable or not. I'm sorry, do plan what? Of action. 
a plan of plan, action plan of, of, of your timetable. As a contractor, you've yeah. always done a timetable of what you're going to get done within the six months period. Gotcha. I can do that. Okay, we have a discussion. I'm sorry, guys. Is there any discussion from the committee? So he has 60 days to get the plan of action firmly with the city? Is that no. what you were saying? No. 60 days to get a permit, permit and get it cleaned up around there? Right, but he's got to have a plan of action within 60 yeah, I think he what needs to have his permit pulled within 60 days. If, yeah, if the permit, permit if pulled the, and a plan of action. can be rehabbed. 60 days is plenty of time to pull a permit and get right. started. But he's got to work with the uh, building inspector to make sure that it's salvageable. So do I work with Angela on that, or who do I work with? Uh, you, you'll be working with Don Shoemaker. Um, if you call me tomorrow, I will uh, give you Don's information. He's our building inspector. And who is this that's speaking now? This is Angela. Okay. All right, Ms. Cole. Okay. So I call you tomorrow, and then you'll get to give me Mr. Shoemaker's number? We'll give you his information, and, and he can meet you at the property and do a walkthrough with you. And, and he'll, he'll decide whether I can rehab it or not? Correct. That's correct. Right. Okay. And then you have uh, to have the plan uh, of action, and you have to be able to tell us what you're going to get done within 60 days. Gotcha. Okay. And I, okay, so my first step is to call him, and then I have 60 days to do all that other stuff? Well, you have 60 days. to be. You've got to get it cleaned up first, and then you have to get with Mr. Shoemaker, and you've got to be able to tell us what you're going to do within the 60 days and, uh, and make sure that it is salvageable first. Okay, so I clean it first, then I call Shoemaker. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, the property needs to be okay. cleaned up. Yes. It's yes. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Do I have a second? Good Lord. Can you restate the motion? No, I'm not. Okay. So I'm making a motion that you have, uh, you've got to have a plan of action within 60 days, and you have to clean up the property within 30 days to be able to get a plan of action and you've got to get with Angela tomorrow and then you've got to get with Don uh, as soon as you get the but, property cleaned up. But 30 days isn't going to give me enough. I'm, I'm out of the country until like two weeks from now. Okay. Well, we'll give you the, 60, the 60 days. To... We'll give you the 60 days to get all of that done. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate that. Okay, do I have a second? I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, but make sure you get with Angela tomorrow. And we we'll probably yes, need to add in there, if nothing's been done, and the city will move forward. And if nothing's been done, the city will move forward to demolishing it. <coughs> yes, ma'am, I, I got you. You got 60 days. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. All right. Y'all have a good day. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm worn out today. Ooh. 1000 Orton Street, Lot 10, Block 1, J.G. Orton, and Lot 8, Block 6, J.G. Orton. Uh, this structure was originally posted in February of 2018. Uh, they had a fire there. A uh, notice was sent to the owner and signed by the owner. Second notice was sent um, earlier part of the, this year, February. In March, the granddaughter left me a message that a contractor would be in to pull a permit for demolition. Uh, that didn't happen. The owner, Ms. McClellan, came into the office yesterday. She has gotten older. She, she's aware of the situation of the house, the condition that the house is in. She can't fix it. She is in agreement to, for the city to demolish it and place a lien on it if, if the board it deems it, you know, uh, place a lien on it, and she will get the lien paid off. So city staff recommendation demolish. Demolition, I'm sorry. Any discussion? Make a motion to demo. Second. 
Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. Number 621, Arthur Weaver Street, Lot 7, Block 15, J.G. Orton. Uh, 621, um, <coughs> Arthur Weaver Street. Uh, the structure was posted in June of 2022. Um, tree fell, went through the roof, uh, tore the roof off or put a hole in the roof. Uh, the, all the windows are out. The structure is open to the elements. Uh, the roof is just partially caved in. Notices have been sent to the owner. Uh, I had a, I spoke to the owner uh, last week. He is aware of the condition of the structure. Uh, he said he was going to make the meeting today, but uh, he did not. He's been working with some other family members uh, on getting some money together to try to get it demolished. He said if, if he wasn't here, then whatever, he would be okay with whatever we decided. So city staff uh, recommends demolition. It's it's in pretty bad shape. It is. Oh. I'll make okay. a motion to demo. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Seventeen sixteen Greer Street, lots four and five, lot two four J G Orton. Uh, seventeen sixteen Greer Street. Pretty much the same thing happened. A uh, tree fell on the house uh, from a storm. Uh, early part of twenty twenty two. We posted the structure. Notices have been sent to the owner. Uh, the, the structure is still a <coughs> nuisance to the neighborhood. Uh, the taxes are current. Uh, I believe the owner, Mr. Benny Eichner, is here to speak on behalf of the property. Uh, so we'll okay. let him, Mr. Uh, Eichner. Mr. Eichner. If you would, state your name as you come to the mic. All right, I, all I need is some matches. <laughs> just, give me a, just give me a permission to say that. Well, I'm on Bernie's house, y'all. Oh, the city won't let you do that because that's against the fire. Well, I'm tired of me and mine. Do what? He and Chong's going to tie them line. He ain't doing nothing. Mind your Bernie's pushing and you pushing. Okay, so uh, you're uh, uh, giving permission for the city to take charge and and demolition. No, I ain't got no money. Like I said, I can burn it down. You can push it. Okay. Well, we can't burn it down. So I mean, the only recommendation that we have is allow the city to um, put a lien on it and handle it and demo it. What you talking about? Well. It's the city, it's the board, uh, makes that makes recommendation. That recommendation to demolish it, and we go, we put it out for bid. We can get bids on it. Who, whoever's issued the bid will tear the house down. We'll place a lien on the property for the amount that the uh, demolition costs, and you you can pay the lien off. The only thing with a lien is that you can't sell the property until the lien is paid off. How much are you going to charge to push it? I don't know. That's That that goes through contracting. You know, we take bids. We put it in the newspaper, solicit bids. Uh, whatever, whoever, usually whoever the lowest bid is, is who the city goes with. So, so I can't uh, burn it down. No, they don't allow burning inside the city limits. Uh, anything, it, it's within 300 feet. Of other structures, so you can't, you can't burn. I'll tell you what I do. I'll see what Neil's gonna do. Okay. I'm tired of mine. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, okay. Well, you can we'll contact uh, someone or see what Mr. Thompson. I think he's referring to Mr. Thompson. It, so. Uh, anyway, city staff recommends demolition. Okay. I make a motion that we follow the city staff's recommendation. I second. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Woo. All right. 
806 right? Richmond Street, uh, lot 9, Stone. Okay, 806 Richmond Street. Uh, the structure yeah. seems to be abandoned. Um, it's It's got siding missing. The windows are uh, broken out. The back half of it is open, uh, pretty much dilapidated. Uh, we've sent notices, haven't had any response from the owners until today. Uh, we've been out on several occasions and talked to the neighbors. It is a nuisance to them. They've been kind of keeping it mowed to kind of keep the critters from coming over into their yard. So uh, we'll see what uh, the owner has to say. I, have, okay. I haven't had any response. Okay. We'll see what she says. All right. Is because I don't live down there, so I moved from my new address. My name is Judith Hernandez. Okay. Tell us your name again. Judith Hernandez. Okay. So I'm the owner of this property. I have the letter that they live like last week as one neighbor they told me, but I didn't receive the, the other ones. I was trying to get a fit. I know part is, you know, down from the because when we bought it, it was a porch that they put just walls around it and we went try to demo that part and to build because I know the foundation is good the foundation is good is yeah because we've been inside mm -hmm. so it, it's just a porch that they made it they just put walls when we bought it it was like that so because it had a hole in that part of it was a room, mm -hmm. so we was trying to fix it. Okay, so you're wanting to fix it up? Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, we was trying to tear down the one is not good. Tear it down? Uh-huh, the part is already demo or tear part, down of part of the structure. Okay, tear down part of the, okay, and leave the other part that's there. Because it has like Two rooms and a kitchen that is good. Okay. So that room we're gonna build. All right. So, so I I apologize. That's the second structure I didn't go see. That's when I <coughs> need to go see them. What is the recommendation of the inspectors that have looked at it? Is it part of it salvageable or not salvageable? It, yes, it looks like it can be rehabbed. That fire, I know you know when you go behind the house, uh -huh. it's tear down because I think it's leaking. Yeah. I just never had any communication. Because okay. I didn't receive, the neighbor told me that they leave a paper, so I went to check it. That's okay. why I didn't know that. Okay, so. okay. We, we sent notices to the address that it's on file with the appraisal. Mm -hmm. and you know, I don't leave either uh -huh. that. I moved. <coughs> oh, okay. I, I, yeah, so, right. So, uh, so you'll be able to give her the address of where you yes. are. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. 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 If you can do that now, that would be helpful. Okay. okay. So, but do you think you can give me some time to repair it? So. Yeah. It would be reasonable to provide the same opportunity, 60 days to get a the plan of action and pull a permit, and six months to show okay. evidence of improvement. All right. You want so to make I, that I'll make a motion that we give 60 days to uh, communicate with the city, get a plan of action, uh, pull a permit, and then six months to show evidence of progress. Now I have some material because we were starting to to repair sure. the house. We had the wi we put like one or two windows, and then where we live, it was damaged by the winter. So the the money we was safe, we used where we live. So. Okay, so you understand the motion. Yes, I understand that they gave me uh, 60, 60 days. days to get the permit and to get the plans that I need to make. Right, plan of action so mm -hmm. that we see progress going on. Yeah, yeah, so. Okay, do I have a second? A second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, well, good luck. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is there any old business that we need to discuss? Oh, I, I, I wanted to add just <laughs> real quick. <laughs> Everybody's ready to go. That um, the city, you know, we've been having pretty good luck with our condemned structures. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a 10 that was torn, that have been torn down by the owners over the past two years. 
and we've got seven that the city has torn down uh, over the past two years. So we are working our list and moving forward with demolition. I know there's still some others out there that we haven't gotten to, but we plan to, you know, get to them. Well, I will say the north side of town is looking much better. We, yeah, we, and I wanted to bring that up too. We, we've been working uh, on trying to get that cleaned up. We're waiting. Um, they have, you know, the property owners in that area has moved out some of the old stuff that needed to be gone, but there's still more. Uh, but we are working with them uh, to get everything kind of back into some sort of compliance. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your hard work and the city, the building inspector. So, thank you. Anything else? All right. This meeting's adjourned.